I praise the Lord today. It is a beautiful day, just uh, moderate sunshine, and it's just amazing to praise God and to just read the Holy Scriptures for those who believe in the Word of God. So God is always good, and He is always faithful, and He promised that He will come again. The question for us to consider today is, the me is the message in Acts chapter 10 from the King James Version Bible, which is my preferred version, was it a literal vision given by God to Peter so that Peter can be used as or it can be used as an excuse for the universal dietary law of the Hebrew nation or the Jewish people can be uh, negated? Is it about eating unclean or clean foods or is it about seeking that which was lost what is the context what is the message now here is the story in acts chapter 10 this is a beautiful story and it's a historical story and it's um and it's worthy of our reading and it's worthy of our time especially in these last days the lord has given us enough information from the Holy Scriptures so that we will know and we will have faith in Jesus Christ the Messiah who came to save me and to save you who believes in Him and has faith in Him that produces works and are assured of His divine grace, divine mercy, and that His love for us is seen manifested and demonstrated by our love and compassion as well for others so here we go the question is of course we know that this is historical and this had happened is this about food eating of the unclean which was regulated in the time of uh, uh, Moses the time of the Israelites the people of God the chosen ones who came out from Egypt to the promised land in Canaan is this the passage or is this the chapter that could that could be used to excuse of eating in eating the unclean foods specifically specified in Leviticus 11 as well as echoed in the book of Deuteronomy is this about diet or this is about the gospel let's find that Mediterranean Mediterranean Sea so this is a beautiful place I've been there I, I saw the, the place that was built for, in honor of the Roman Emperor Caesar uh, by by his um, by his uh, subjects over there the Roman Empire and so he he literally um, Paul I'm uh, the book of Acts dr. Luke the physician literally gave us historical specific points of interest and a name Cornelius he was a centurion meaning to say he's he could be a commander of the 100 men in the army they are called the Italian band so it's just there it's uh, it's given to us verse number two a description a devout man so he was in the military and he is a devout man and one that feared God with all his house which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always so the writer of the book of Acts of the Apostles Luke the physician Luke, Luke who is who was uh, a follower of Jesus gave us the description of who Cornelius is so this is about Cornelius um, being described as a military man, a commander, um, a man of strength and honor who, who has a compassion for other people. He gave alms, meaning to say he shared maybe his wealth or, or his uh, salary for, to uplift the lives of those uh, who are poor during that time. So we could understand now that the, the story revolves around this man and uh, how the Lord uh, would lead him uh, to be uh, to be uh, 
in contact with Peter later on. So this is we are being set up, so to speak, in the story. We are being set up to, to understand. He saw, verse number 3, Cornelius saw, in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming in to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. So he saw in a vision. It's a clear day. It's, it's, it's not a dark uh, time. It's, it's clear. It's, uh, an obvious, um, it's an obvious manifestation of God that he is being called. He is being directed to something, something so important, something so extraordinary. And remember, Cornelius is a military man, and Italians, they were considered, in the Italian band, I, I mean, they were considered uh, not part of the, of the chosen people. They are, we could call it generally, generic Gentiles. And during that time, once you're not uh, a part of the Hebrew economy or the Hebrew nation, the Jewish people whose ancestors descended from uh, Abraham, you're considered infidel, faithless. You are not part of the group of people that will be saved. So you are, in our language right now, an outcast. You are, you are unclean, so to speak. Unclean in a sense spiritually. You're unclean. Um, no devout Jew could touch you even though you're a devout pagan or devout Gentile. So that's the context. Cornelius, a military pagan considered generically Gentile. So, But he was a good man. So there are good people among Gentiles. I'm also a Gentile by, by affiliation, but by faith, I'm, I'm an Israelite by faith being um, part of the uh, uh, the promise to abraham so that is by faith so cornelius was by 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 birth a gentile so but by faith not yet but he was a good person a devout praying to god always that's what the bible says a verse number four it's beginning to to um, unfold now and when he looked on him the angel Cornelius was looking. He was afraid and said, now remember, he was a military man. He was trained in the arts of fighting. He was um, trained in the arts of killing, but he was afraid. What is it, Lord? And he, rec Cornelius recognized, because he was a devout, devout person who prayed to God. He doesn't know the God of Israel, probably, but he believes in the God somewhere, some, somewhere out there. And, and God manifested through his angel the man um, the messenger of god the angel showed uh, in a vision to cornelius and cornelius responded with a very humble and very uh, appropriate manner he was uh, a military commander and he humbled himself and he was courteous and he said what is it lord and he said unto him thy prayers and thine alms are come of come up for a memorial before God. This is a lesson. Whether you are uh, part of a denomination or a different religious organization really doesn't matter, friends. I will say that again. Even though I have been, uh, I have been employed for the past many years of my life as well in a particular denomination, particular organization of the church, I don't necessarily believe uh, I don't necessarily uh, would say that one particular organization is better or is best suited to fulfill God's mission than other other denominations other organizations no not that way and even in my own denomination I'm speaking to those who read my my bio and my introduction in my Facebook uh, page even in my own church, so to speak, I don't necessarily believe, but I love my own people. I don't necessarily agree or believe that we are the only ones who have the monopoly. God has his own people outside of this church that I'm, I'm, I'm talking to. I'm, 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 I have worked my life with, which had also had hurt and, and, and had the, and help both ways so 
what my point is God has devout people outside of the Seventh Day Adventist Church Seventh Day Adventist Church has become too much of an organization rather than uh, a, a vehicle or or, 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 um, or an agency of salvation to all men. There are good people inside, and there are bad people in, inside as well. So, right now, it's 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 open. What I mean, open. It's God's Spirit is open to all people who are like Cornelius would like to know the truth, and it's just that we have the information we have the truth and what are we doing with that paul or peter in this case has the truth but he has the culture as well exclusive culture exclusive judaism culture during that time he was he was so ingrained when he was young that that they could not go outside of their homes and mingled with the unclean Gentiles who worship different God, who, who eat differently, who speak differently, who have different upbringing and whose scriptures are probably different. So that is the case. So the Lord heard this Gentile, Cornelius, his prayer and his good works and God has compassion. So friends, God has compassion for those people outside of this denomination that I'm that I am a member of there are good people devout prayerful people outside of this organization that God is showing himself and has a message so that's a clear point from the holy scriptures it's not the monopoly it will never be monopolized by the organization of the seventh day adventist church the gospel is for those who love the Lord by giving um, by giving their hearts and praying always and by giving alms to the people that's what the Bible says in the case of Cornelius verse number five and now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon whose surname is Peter Caesarea is north of Tel Aviv and Tel Aviv uh, Joppa is is part of Tel Aviv, present day Tel Aviv. I happened to walk from my hotel in Herod, King Herod's Hotel uh, a few years back and I walked to this place that tradition says that Peter uh, had seen this vision later on that we are reading and it's directly south of, uh, of Caesarea. So Cornelius sent his men, military agents, to go south and look for a man named Simon Peter which was instructed by the angel he lodged he lodged with one Simon a tanner whose house is by the seaside he shall tell thee what thou art to do so, so Cornelius has a vision he was a pagan and he was instructed to send agents or men to go to the south Joppa and he will he has a specific name the agent miraculously during that time there was no internet there was no there was just no communication but the, the amazing thing is supernatural communication has already been uh, been uh, used by God to communicate <laughs> so just amazing even without the internet and Wi-Fi or our cell phones the, the messenger of the Lord could speak the name and Cornelius has no clue who who uh, who, who Peter was and um, Peter has no clue later on on, on what God is, is trying to, uh, to, to show him. So let us read, continue. Verse number 7, And when the angel which sp spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called to his, two of his household servants, most trusted, and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. Meaning to say, he sent his two servants and a military man. They are pagans considered by Jews unclean, considered by uh, by their culture not worthy of time. They should be, if somebody steps up, steps in when they are gathered, the Jews, the devout Jews should, must leave. They don't want to be in the presence of unclean people. It's like during the 60s where the racial divide in America was so, so, so outrageous that there was literal discrimination it's just like this there's a ethnic tension hatred and uh, it's human it's 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 not between black and whites it's even among whites and whites and blacks and blacks it's between browns and blacks and 
whites and browns everyone is everyone is 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 conscious or unconscious that he or he is a racial discrimi discriminator it, nobody is exempted because of the human heart the wickedness wants to individual heart wants to be supreme that's the that's the main issue of of, of racial racial divide and racial discrimination and ra racial destruction the desire to be supreme the desire to be better the desire to have the better land the better job the better salary the better uh, accommodation the better treatment that is within each and everyone's heart it just happened that it's 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 unequal so I'm telling you friends this is this is also a racial ethnic divide what we're reading here Cornelius a pagan maybe Italians they're not black and uh, Peter who is a Jew they're not that black as well their lights probably uh, more of some scholars I heard they're more like the Middle Eastern Iraqi and Iranian in our present time complexion or whatever but still it's human beings it's not about black and white it's about the human heart discriminating against fellow human beings so Cornelius as instructed by the messenger the angel of the Lord sent two of his trusted servants in the house because he's a commander he has a prestigious position and he sent a loyal aid a, a, a military company aid so to speak a military aid and when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. So he sent them south. It's not that far. Uh, during the time when they were riding uh, horses or, or donkeys or whatever they used during the time. Um, this is not a, a bad uh, road trip. So it's not that long. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh into the city, Peter went up upon this house stop to pray about the sixth hour. So Cornelius on the ninth hour, he heard because the south, Peter was going up on the sixth hour into the house stop to pray about the sixth hour. Verse number 10. And he became hungry. This is the problem with, with Peter. He was not only an uh, intemperate guy. Just like me, I feel like I, I have this uh, workaholic. I wanted to do things. I want to I wanted quick and, and then I become so hungry as well sometimes when you are thinking so much. and I want to pray. I want to finish my Bible reading. I want to do something productive. I want to I want to be I want to be first there in, 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 in that uh, uh, objective goal that I have for the day and I wanted to rush to that. And so Peter was hungry. He was on the housetop, it was a sixth hour, and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance or a vision. Trance or a vision. So meaning, while his inter, uh, while his uh, the group of people that's with Peter, we don't know who they were. Um, maybe they were preparing meal, but before Peter could go down to eat because he was hungry, he he fell into a trance or a deep. Um, probably a vision that is so important that God allowed him to be hungry while at the same time thinking of food downstairs and thinking of what to eat uh, maybe the, the Jews the Jews is strictly during the time um, not only halal but um, what they call this uh, they have this regular restrictions and regulations how to cook meat how to cook uh, chicken how to cook fish and they have specific ways how to kill the animals for eating and for preparing how to cook I mean and also they don't eat naturally unclean those that the Bible says unclean in Leviticus 11 um, pig pork ham bacon pepper the same thing the Jews Peter and even Jesus, the rest of the apostles, the rest of those who follow, they don't eat that. Very clear. Even Paul, very clear. Not not negotiable. It's it's a dietary law. They have a purpose to save their 
their bodies from certain diseases. That's clear in Exodus, Leviticus, as well as Deuteronomy, how God's people were provided by God. But clean meats they do because after uh, the flood, there was no, no, no vegetations, no fruit. So they were allowed to eat, but only clean meat. Clean during the time of Peter. Clean meat. So this is the story. Peter was so hungry that God gave him a vision because the man, the pagans, uh, the Gentiles sent by Cornelius, the two household help, trusted household helpers and a military agent, uh, trusted uh, uh, agent of uh, Cornelius, were on their way to Joppa. So Peter was there, he was hungry, he was not able to go down and eat, and then he became, um, uh, he became so imbued with this vision, as we will see. Verse 11, and Peter he fell into a trance and saw heaven and op opened and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet neat at the four corners and let down to the earth so you could hear you could it was described in the bible self-explanatory wherein were all manner of four footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air wow and there came a voice to him peter rice I mean, rice, Peter, kill and eat. He was hungry, remember? And he was in a vision, probably in an open eyes, with open eyes. He was not closing his eyes with open eyes. He saw heaven open with a sheet and all kinds of unclean, not, like, not, not just pork, probably bats, rats, crocodiles, elephant, camels, all those things that could not be eaten, just, just unclean. So you could imagine he was hungry, and he was, um, what they call this, uh, he was um, given that vision because uh, Cornelius' uh, uh, helpers are on their way to meet Simon Peter. They, they don't know who Simon was, Simon Peter was, but they were given instruction because of the miraculous uh, uh, moments when Cornelius uh, was given that, that vision by the angel. But Peter said, verse 14, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. A wise Jew would always answer because he was literally hungry. He said, no, no, not the Lord, no. I would rather fast than eat this, this despicable, unclean beast. No, no, no. We don't want to eat crocodile for, for lunch or we don't want to prepare camel for lunch or we don't want to prepare pig, pepperoni, bacon or for, for, for lunch we don't want uh, or for dinner uh, we don't want a bat fried bat for dinner we don't want uh, he was just saying I'm just giving you the exaggeration part of, of what probably transpired no Lord not so Lord I know this is from you a clear vision from heaven I'm touched by your by your concern for me but I'm hungry no no I don't want to eat and, and, and killing it no and the voice, verse 15, the voice spake unto him again the second time. Now the voice is not recognized here whether it's directly from God or from the messenger or the angel, but it is the voice from heaven. Unto him again said, but in the King James Version, this voice is in red words. So this is assumed to be the words of Jesus Christ. What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common or unclean. So this is it. This is what Jesus said. So Jesus spoke it. So Jesus is dismantling the dietary laws in Leviticus. There you go. This is the bullseye, ground zero, that you can eat everything now. That you can eat everything now. Because what God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. Meaning to say in the other versions, the other dynamic versions that are that are giving us different understanding probably uh, NIV the King James version um, someone called this NIV the uh, the Jesuit behind the scene translations I cannot blame this uh, independent minister and because I tried to check as well and verify and I can say that there is so many uh, many changes so to speak or addition or a little 
subtle uh, nuances that, that could give us a wrong impression. But this is the point. That voice, let's say, by the, by the, uh, by the account of King James Version, is from the Lord Jesus Himself, the authority. And he said, what God hath cleansed that call not thou come. And the question is this, is, did God really cleanse those beasts over there that he had shown Peter in the, in the blanket? Was it literally cleansed? But it's all about calling, that you call, thou, thou call not thou common. Meaning to say, the translation is very clear in the King James Version. That's why I trust the King James Version. The other version would say, God has, do not call, hath God not cleansed that you call them, that you call the beast unclean? I mean, to say it's all, it's about food, but this one is not about food. Listen, what God hath cleansed, that call not thou common, meaning to say, it is not ordinary, it's not common, it's not, it's not the, 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 uh, Obviously, not talking about the, the the dietary restrictions here. It's about the unclean uh, understanding towards towards something or someone. Okay, this was done. Verse sixteen done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven, and there was no more explanation. Verse number seventeen. Now, while Peter doubted in himself what this vision what this vision which he had seen should mean should mean this was a vision and there was there is no such thing as literal ways of of of, of killing or eat and the fact that peter did not rise kill and eat gives us a clue that this is not about food listen verse 17 the immediate text that follows behold behold after he had he has been doubting himself behold the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. So the, the guys were already on the gate and Peter was just doubting him in himself whether this, is, uh, this vision means something that he needs to tell everybody and preach, began to preach, hey, eat, kill, rice, kill and eat pork, rice, kill and eat bat, rice, kill and eat cockroaches, rice, eat, uh, eat and kill elephant, rice, kill and eat camels, which are, by the way, described in Leviticus 14 that those beasts or animals were indeed unclean owls, bats, eagles, here. Jews during the time of Jesus Christ and the time of Peter, the time of Paul, the time of the apostles, they don't eat. And even now I don't eat them as well because of the, the diseases that may be spreading. And in fact, it's, it's clear fact that the virus that we are all are devastated from comes from the unclean bat which is the bible say you know not even touch their flesh or 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 play with them or it's implied there it's not the tear but it's there the bat the here and the budget don't 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 do anything with them they're wild beasts they're in the wild god has other purposes for them and so while peter was doubting himself and trying to explain what the vision was listen the immediate impact Cornelius servants two servants and a military aide three men seek thee while verse 18 I mean and called and asked whether Simon which was surnamed Peter was lodged there while Peter thought on the vision the spirit said unto him behold three men seek thee is it about eating or is it about seeking that's that's why the title is like that is it about eating rice peter kill and eat lord i can't do that it's too too much crocodiles too much to kill and eat camels too much to hippopotamus is too much to kill and eat um what else uh, too much lord but there are people literally now that literally nowadays eat those things crocodile snakes bats rats rabbits oh if you could only understand the risk of transmission of diseases, then you'll probably be, be careful of what you eat. So is this about eating or seeking? Arise, therefore, verse 20. Arise. What did Jesus spoke according to the King James Version? Because this is a red letter words here. The vision said, rise, Peter, kill, and eat. What God hath cleansed that call not thou common. 
in the King James Version. I mean to say, do, do not discriminate, do not be exclusive, do not, do not call uh, anything or someone or something in your mind common because something is about to happen. While verse 19, let, this, is just, this is just important. But while Peter thought on the vision, the, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the, the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am he whom you seek. What is the cost whether you are come? Generally, during the time, that will be a source of angst or anxiety for Jews, faithful Jews, especially disciples of Jesus speaking about the resurrection of Jesus. They will be probably be hunted down by, not they were hunted down by, by Saul, who is also a Jew, but they will be hunted down by authority, which are pagan. So they are, they are probably are having that tension. They will not probably entertain or they will not probably believe those Gentiles. So this is the clue of what's the, what's the vision is all about. You can't, you can't label other people. This is this is my insight now interpretation. Unclean, because God made them clean when they are able to hear and receive the good news. Now they need you to teach them what to do. So that is my interpretation. And so, and so. This is this is now in verse twenty two. And, and they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man, and one that feared God and, a good rep and of good report among all the nation of the Jews, was warned from God by an angel, by an holy angel, to send for thee into his house to hear words of thee. So Cornelius, who is, who is a real good person, a genuine good person, he is a Gentile, but he, 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 he works good works, both people. Uh, Jews and Gentiles alike, and the other ethnic groups there. He 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 doesn't show um, prejudice, probably, and he was considered a good person. So the the messengers, the the two, the two household helpers of Cornelius and the military aid spoke to Peter, and they said, Cornelius, the center, a just man and one that feared God, wants to hear the words. Of the verse 23 then called he them in and lodged them and on the morrow Peter went away with them and certain brethren from Joppa company there is no no mention that they eat or even at least a slight hint or clue that Peter prepared a, a crocodile steak for them or a camel uh, teriyaki or, 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 or even pork there's none Jews abhor those unclean meats for a reason because of their health. They abide with their dietary law because they honor Moses, who is the greatest lawgiver in the nation of Israel even until now, except for some Jews who, who, who really want to eat unclean meat. They don't care, but they call themselves Jews. But during this time in our story, the Jews were really obedient and keepers of God's commandment. So he entertained, he, he lodged, Peter lodged those Gentiles. That is the point. That is the point. It's not about eating. It's about seeking whom God desperately called to repentance. Those people who don't know the truth about the true God. That's the point here. There's no way this is about, if you read the context, there's just no food here. It's just the vision. It's not literal that rising. It's about welcoming, lodging, and going with them, trusting them. That's the point of the messenger or the angel. And as Peter was coming down, oh, verse 24, I mean, I'm sorry. So they were, they were preparing to go to, from Joppa, they were going north to uh, Caesarea. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius, Oh, verse 24, I'm sorry. And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them and had called together his kinsmen. And here, he has already a huge church gathering people. I mean, people. Cornelius, Cornelius was just a figure that is so interesting in the Bible that one man could bring his whole, his whole relatives, his whole, 
community, Gentiles, unclean in the eyes of Peter, unclean in the eyes of the Jews, into that setting. What a gospel opportunity, what an evangelistic, there's no budget for that, no spending, no, it's just obedience to the, to the Lord's command. And Cornelius was a good person, a pious, devout man, a Gentile, and all his kinsmen, the Bible says, and, and his community, they were just waiting for, for Peter. Verse 25, And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him, fell down at his feet and worshipped him. P Peter, Peter who, who left Jesus when he was about to be crucified, denied Jesus three times. He was being worshipped by Cornelius, a commander, a military man, well trained in the arts of fighting. Given an order, he is duty bound to follow with with his life at stake. He keep his word, honorable man. He bowed down to Peter. He worshipped him. What was the reaction of Peter? But Peter took him up saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. It is only Jesus Christ. It is only Jesus Christ. When people worship him, he did not say, Stand up, for I am a man. He al Jesus Christ allowed his disciples and all those who believe in him to worship him because he was not only a man, not only he became a man, he was God the Father. Uh, he was God the Son, whom God the Father had sent. He was indeed the creator, the active agent of crea creation, Jesus Christ. And he allowed himself to be worshipped. But Peter, who is a man, did not. So that's a difference. Okay. Verse 27, as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. He was surprised. I would be so... I would be so doubting at first if ever this happens to me, if I was Peter. Oh no, it's like I'm a Filipino Adventist Christian who will go to, um, who will go to Africa for, uh, you know, for a mission that I don't know, but God just give me a, vi a vision to, to go there and not, not to discriminate. Maybe I will be in a voodoo village but there was a, a good person there that's probably black than me i don't know and i had to preach and i'll be probably be angst and they all gathered and then i'm a little bit darker than they are and i felt like man this is not my people this is not my language this is not and they don't believe what i believe they don't eat what i eat i eat plants vegetables and fruits and they feel that i'm weak they might eat me Some, something like that but that was an opportunity for Peter to seek that which was lost. Is it about eating or seeking? So that's exactly what's happening here. And he said to them, as they were gathered together, verse 28, Ye know how that it is unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company. Unlawful in the Jewish traditions and policies in the Jewish nations, states law. Uh, they had they don't have the state during the time they were under they were subjugated by the roman empire they were under the roman roman governor and 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 uh, well a roman assigned governor uh and they were they were instructed when they were young they were young that you know what y you can't you can't mingle with non-jews gentile gentiles they are unclean so Peter opened up his words or his statement like this. No, ye know how that it is unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. They are they are per forbidden. It's just like it's a lockdown. It's not lockdown. You can't go to another nation. You know, you evangelize in your own country. That was the mentality during that time. It was so racially, ethnically divided that the Samaritan, even the Samaritan the Jews, they were cousins, so to speak, but they don't even see eye to eye and they don't like each other. They hate each other. They have wars. They have they are fighting. They are bloodsheds there. Now, this is pagan. The pagans subjugated the Jews and they imposed emperor worship to, to the Jews, which abhor idolatry and even worshiping of, of, of men. But Cornelius worshiped Peter, unheard of, meaning to say, Cornelius was desperate to know who the true God is, who the true God that, that um, 
Peter was about to say. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. This is the answer. Show God vision, God's vision. Rise, Peter, kill and eat. It's a, not about eating, it's about seeking the lost. The dietary law still regulates the Jewish uh, culture, faith in their God because of health reasons, not of salvation per se, but salvation is also about healing. So it has a sort of indirect connection to, um, to your salvation per se, not that you will be saved by what you eat, but by the, but by the healing of, of what you eat so that you can praise and glorify God and that your minds and heart are strong enough to continue to worship and to do God's will. Peter said, I should not call any man common or unclean. The vision was not about food. It is about seeking the lost, the Gentiles. Verse 29, Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying as soon as I was sent for. I asked therefore for what intent you have sent for me. So what is your intention while you called me, while you asked for me? And I came here, verse 30, And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. Verse 31, And said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thy alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Just Cornelius is just speaking what he experienced. Send therefore to Joppa and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon the Tanner by the seaside, who, when he cometh, shall speak unto thee. Immediately, verse 34, 33, Immediately, therefore I send to thee, and thou hast well done, thou art, that thou art come, meaning to say, Peter, the same guy, in, impulsive, workaholic, he was the right guy for the right time. He, he, he went there because, because Cornelius was just waiting for them. If, if he delayed, if he did not go because he was hesitant or doubting, this could not have happened. Exactly. Exactly. Immediately, therefore, I sent to thee, thou hast well done, that thou art come. Now, therefore, are we all here present before God to hear all things that God are commanded thee of God? Oh, amazing. How I wish there are people like this in our time right now. That I, it just... It's just so blessed to minister to these kinds of people. This is what we need. He is a better Christian than most Christians during his time. But he was not a Christian yet. He was a Gentile who understands and who knows God. And God showed himself to him. He, it's like he was more Seventh-day Adventist than most Seventh-day Adventists of our time. Then Peter verse 34 opened his mouth and said about truth i perceive that god is no respected the person meaning to say this is where the the truth is um in acts 10 verse 34 that says when he opened it, peter opened his mouth god does not is no respecter of person meaning to say god doesn't care if you're does not care god is is not about the business of saving only the whites or the blacks he saves the yellow, the brown, everything. N not if everyone. God is in the business of showing himself to those who devout themselves to good works and who are willing to listen to the gospel of truth. Exactly. Whether you're a former voodoo, a former Catholic, a former Protestant, a former uh, spirit, spirit, spiritualistic, uh, spiritualist, a former killer, a former military, a former mercenary, whoever you are, friends. Verse thirty-five. God is no respecter of person, meaning to say he he can work to everyone. Col color is not an issue. Ethnic group is not an issue. Even wealth is not an issue. Even health is not an issue. God works to save everyone who calls upon his name. Verse number 30, uh, 35. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Two words. Fear and work righteousness. Oh, oh, no. Three words. Fear God. Four words now. Fear God and worketh righteousness. Four words. Worketh, uh, fear God, worketh righteousness. Okay. 
Verse 36, the word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. So this is the time Peter preached about Jesus Christ, his master. That word I say, you know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. He gave, he gave the history from where the time John, the cousin of Jesus, was the forerunner talking about the Messiah and, and how Jesus was baptized in the, um, the, the river of Jordan. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. God, God was giving the power to Jesus. And we are witnesses of all things, which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Verse 39, verse 40. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. Meaning to say, Peter was an eyewitness. This is powerful, friends. Because Peter saw everything and he, he testified to Cornelius. Not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before God. Even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. Clean foods. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God and to be the judge of the quick and the dead, both the living and the dead. Verse 43, To him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believed in him shall receive remissions of sin. So Paul is explaining to him it's only Christ Jesus, the, the man from Nazareth, whom God gave the power to do good, heal, heal, and heal the, 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 the sick and, and set free those who are possessed by the devil. And he was murdered he was hanging on the cross in Jerusalem. And then verse number 43, he said, those who believe in Jesus, their sins will be, their sins will be forgiven, remission, the same idea. Verse 44, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the cry. Ah, amen, beautiful. You don't need a budget for evangelism. You don't need to be orga or an organizer. All we need to do, all I need to understand, is that when the Spirit of God supernaturally works, it just works without a single penny spent, without too much effort. It's just the vision. One man in the north, one man in the south. Just two visions. It's not about eating unclean foods, friends. It's about seeking the lost. And they of the... Cer while Peter yet spoke on these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word, praise God. The Holy Ghost worked with them just like in the upper room in Acts chapter 2 when Peter spoke the fiery message which I had in my video. Uh, if you could check my timeline down there. And they of the circumcision which believe was astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. So Peter has his own entourage and their people who came with him, Gentiles and Jews together and the Holy Spirit fell for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God and then Peter Peter answered and then Peter answered Peter can any man forbid water that this should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord then prayed they him to tarry certain days Cornelius was baptized by the Holy, by water, by the influence of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And the disciples, led by Peter, stayed with Cornelius. Just like Peter accommodated, uh, gave us, us, uh, hospitality to the Cornelius servants, two servants and one military agent. Now Cornelius entertain give give hospitality to peter and his entourage is this acts chapter 10 talking about unclean food negative negative in what we have read the whole chapter it's about seeking the lost peter was still a jew faithful to the dietary law not to be saved but to stay obedient and to stay healthy in the Word of God the purpose of the regulations of God is for our safety and security as we share the gospel to other people so friends 
when you hear someone a pastor a priest uh, whoever a rabbi an imam talking about the scripture in Acts 10 friends refer to the Holy Scriptures it is about seeking the lost whom God had paid with his dear life to redeem so there you have it there you understand I mean there I hope you understand the message of Acts 10 I will still encourage you friends to continue holding on to the healthy lifestyle found in the Old Testament they are still relevant to our time extremely important for us to be healthy and the Bible gave us the reasons and the Bible gave us the word how we can achieve because what we eat is what we what we what we become and what we become is what God is interested so that we can become his messengers to the Gentiles those people are not Seventh-day Adventists those people are not Christians so friends may you be blessed today may God continue to give you strength and God continue to give you the knowledge above all wisdom from him may God continue to bless and keep you today is my prayer